Hey everyone, what's going on? It's your boy Krebsy Crypto, and for today's video, I'm just making a follow up video on my flux mining tutorial and I'm kind of just showing you guys like what my mining power is because I have switched all my mining rigs over to flux mining but I'll be explaining all that in today's video it's kind of just like an update video and showing you guys like the back end of the flux mining tutorial since I wasn't able to in the original video because I didn't have it directly mining on flux itself I just knew how to and I've tested it in the past but now recently as of the past week or so yeah, the past week and then into this week, I've changed like my 4 gigabyte and both of my 3 gigabyte over to flux mining. So I'm just going to go over that briefly. Now I know I said in the tutorial I wasn't directly mining flux and I wasn't at the time because I didn't really like look into the coin and look into the community itself. But lately, like over the past week or so, I have went and looked into the coin more and kind of understood it and... Since we all know that like Ethereum, the POS is coming up for that possibly, it could be pushed back more. These other coins that are in the mix, so Flux, um, there's also Ergo, which I'll be making a video on it's coming up soon. And there's also Ravencoin, and there's a few others that could possibly take the main role of Ethereum once that's done mining, if that even becomes a thing. You always got to keep that in the back of your head because with Ethereum, it was supposed to be proof of stake a while ago, but it never ended up going through so now it's been pushed off and pushed off but we'll see so i decided to go ahead and mine a little bit of this flux coin and build up a little bit of a wallet of it for myself so as you see right now i have two gtx 1060 the asus models and they're both three gigabyte and they're both running uh for flux so it's on the equihash one two five i think point seven or point four um algorithm and same with my GTX 1650 mobile version, it's a 4 gigabyte graphics card and it's running on Flux because I've been using a lot of like the mining calculators and looking over things. Like I said, I'm not a huge fan of using them. I usually don't like abide by them myself. I use actual programs and see what my profits will be because the markets are very undetermined. But I figured since all these websites and everywhere showing that Flux is one of the most profitable for like my lower end cards, I figured why not throw these cards on them and see what we could produce so I'll be showing you guys the pool also for these that I be that I am currently mining on and it's a pretty like solid pool all around it's not a Z pool or anything it's a new one that I found because I'm always researching pools and things like that too for you guys but first here we'll take a look at the 1063 gigabytes and I'm just running both of them one's just on a riser and one's on a motherboard here but as we see here I'll just pull it up I'll try to focus it as best I can as you see, one card is getting 16.56 souls and the other one's getting 15.7. It fluctuates time to time depending how many shares you're picking up, how many stales, how many rejects, a lot of things. But as you see, there's all my wattage and all the power. So 88.8 .8 watts for the first card because that card is fully working, like the temps are fine on it. And the second one is at 69.5 watts. So that one's turned down like a significant amount compared to the other one just due to the fact it has like a heating issue. And that's the one on my riser right here, so this guy there. This one is completely fine. This one, I've changed thermal paste and such, but it still has a little bit of a heating issue. So I'll have to look into that eventually, but it still runs as is. I know I could be causing more damage, but as you see overall, I get around, I believe it's like 31 souls with this one, 30 to 40. Like I said, all depending on when it's running and how much power I'm really putting into it. We'll take a look at my MSI afterburner here, and I believe I got my mouse. I got my mouse hooked up. So this one is for the one that's on the riser, the one that has the heating issue. So here's all these stats up here: the temperature and the memory, the GPU, the voltage, and things like that. The power limit, as you see, I have to have it turned down to 60. I'm trying to focus it the best. Just got some sunlight. The temp limit, I have it at 78, so if it hits 78 degrees, it will drop and like completely shut off, just that way it's like a safe measure. The fan speed I have running about 80, and it runs about 51 degrees. I know that's fairly cool, I should I should crank it up more because like obviously the heating issue isn't like significant with the cold air here in Canada, but I don't like to wear down the cards too, too much, and considering I'm not paying for power, it's not a necessity for me to keep things cranked up and running at full throttle. 
So if I can go ahead and just like save the card a little bit more while still making money, why not? So yeah, overall it's a pretty like stable algorithm. It's meant just for GPUs, I believe, at least like this one on the Equihash. I know there's a few different variants, but this one specifically is meant for GPUs. But if we focus in there, in between where my cards are, you can see the total souls of 31.7, and it's running at a total of 157.8 watts. And like I said, I'll show you the pool, so I'll show you what I'll be making. But now I'm just going to flip over the 4 gigabyte card and show you what that's running at. Alright, so now I've flipped over to the 4 gigabyte card here, the Gigabyte GTX 1650. Now, like I've mentioned in the past videos, it is a mobile version. So originally the 1650 was made for laptops, like a gaming laptop. But I believe it became like a good graphics card and just popular, so they made it standalone for the uh, actual desktop. But the card itself, as you see, compared to like the 1060 and probably others, it's a smaller one. Like I said, it's a mobile one, so I'm not drawing as much power as a normal 1650 would be. Like I said, being the mobile version. But now we'll just go over and I'll show you guys what I'm making on this here. So this is the 1650, the 4 gigabyte, the GTX here. So as we see, it's only running at about 14.20 souls, so nothing crazy. And it only takes about 63.8 watts. And then we'll go over to my MSI afterburner settings here. And there's all like the temps and volts, just like previous. So it's around the same. I try to keep all the cards around the same temperature if I can. Because like these being in my room when it comes to sleeping and such, it sometimes gets very warm. And I don't like always leaving my window open through the night because just the weather dependent and such. But we'll look at like the power limit I have set. So I have 85 on the power limit. I have this one cranked up a bit more. And then 78 on the temp limit. And then fan speed is 85. So I have to have these settings cranked up a bit more, just being the mobile version, just to draw itself more power, so that way I have more power going to the algorithm itself. But as we see here, it's all running smoothly, and I'm getting accepted shares. And like I said, 14.21 uh, souls a second. So overall, not bad, and I'm letting you guys know right now, it's very profitable on the flux with this whole setup here that I have. So if you have GTX 1060 3 gigabytes or even just lower end 4 gigabyte cards, I'm going to recommend using Flux like I did in the tutorial. So mainly with the 3 gigabytes I'm going to focus on because like I said the tutorial was mainly for that. But these run phenomenal on 3 gigabyte graphics cards, mainly 1060s. Now it all depends on like your power consumption and things like that as usual. But if you have ones that are kind of in the same region as my 1060s, you're going to pull a profit on Flux most of the time, even with Hydro rates, just because it's a profitable algorithm and you're just competing off against other GPUs, not so much ASICs and other things getting involved, so profits don't get wrecked there. But even then, like I said, for 4 gigabyte, this is technically the most profitable according to mining websites, but I know of other ones I've been using that are more profitable or just as equal. And overall, I've been using the Mini Z mining software, so it's the same one I've been using in that tutorial I showed you guys. So it's all set up running the same way I showed you guys in the tutorial. So now I'll jump over to the computer and show you guys the pool and the stats there. So if you guys want, you can go ahead and get mining there. Then that way, if you're on the boundary of determined, you know, I don't know if I want to mine flux or put some aside, I'm just gonna kinda say, most likely if you're a lower end miner like me, you'll want to do this just for profit wise, either if you're building it up and converting it, or if you're just hanging on to flex for future, you know? Either way, it's a good profitable algorithm. But now we'll just head over to my desktop and I'll go through some stuff there on the mining pool. Alright, so now we're over on the computer, and before we get started, this video took me a little bit to get uploaded, that's why there's a bit of a gap in my uploads. It's just due to the fact I wanted to let it build up and actually like have a little bit of data to go through with you guys quickly here. And with this mining pool and stuff, it brings a lot of data, it displays a lot. So you can see specifically everything about like your miner. I know some pools are very like hit or miss with their stats page. 
but this mining pool here seems to be pretty solid. So the mining pool I'm using is called Hero Miners, and they have like different coins you can go ahead and mine, so you can check out other coins as well. But we're focusing on Flux, because that's what I'm mining, and that's what this video is about. So once you come to the website, I'll post a link in the description, and it's flux.herominers.com. And in the description, you can check it out, and if you want to get set up on here. So once you're loaded up on the website, it's going to bring you to this homepage here. And there's going to be a lot of different information at first. So up at the top here, there's going to be a few different tabs. What you want to do is click the start one and it's going to tell you how to uh, get set up and started with flux mining. Like I said, you can watch my video or if you want to specifically go through and see how they do it with their mining software. But you'll need to do it uh, either way just to get the stratum and information to get your miner set up. But once you're on here and once you're set up and running, you're going to have like the total network hash rate, the pool hash rate, your hash rate, how much BTC you're making. So like Flux converted to BTC, but don't worry, you're not getting paid out in BTC. It's all Flux pavement, how much you're making in US, and then the price of Bitcoin. And then once you scroll down, you have a bunch of these stratum URLs. And there's a bunch of different locations, so it, it makes it a lot easier for people like around the world to access it because there's a bunch of ones in different areas for, like I said, multiple people. And once you keep scrolling down, you could go ahead and look at each specific like mining pool. So they have uh, pool mining, and that's what we're focusing on. So like the pool hash rate, when the last block was found, how often on average it's found. The minimum payout here is one flux, so that's pretty good compared to like two miners and other ones. Even like Z pool at 0.05, but sometimes it takes a bit to actually find a block. No like hate towards Z pool, I'm just saying there's just not a handful of miners there for flux. But this pool I'm finding blocks like consistently every half hour and I'm getting rewarded for it and it's all working out. And it's only one flux, so it's a low payment requirement. And you can also do solo mining as well. So there's a solo mining and it tells you all the same type of details if you have a big enough system. And then it breaks it down all into graphs. And even better, it has an estimate mining profits thing. So if you already know your hash rate, you can plug it in and see how much flux you're going to be earning. So I'll roughly do 40 for mine because that's what I tend to like be around. And I have mine set. If you go in the top right, you can set what currency. I have mine set in Canadian because obviously I'm in Canada. But it shows you daily how much flux you're going to get. Weekly, monthly. And this is just my average hash rate. Sometimes I get more, sometimes I get less depending on your shares. And sometimes the pool shows a little bit higher hash rate too and things like that. But then once you scroll down, you won't have this information right off the bat. You'll have to put in your wallet address, your Flux mining wallet address that you set up with your miner. So once you paste it in there, it's going to bring up all this information. And like I said, it's a pretty in-depth chart and you get to see a, like a good handful of information. So you can really keep up on your mining. So I let mine run for a few days just so I could build up some stats here so I could show you guys quickly. So like I said, on average, my hash rate actually is 44.19, but my current hash rate is 40.95. Like I said, it always fluctuates. And that's like the last hour. You have the six hour average and then 24 hour average. I just got my 1650 back up and running. For some reason when I was sleeping, it like shut off. So I wasn't able to continuously mine, but my 1060s were fine and online and running. So I just had to wake up and fix that quickly. So now it's all back up and running there. And then if you go down, it shows you like the last share submitted less than a minute ago, your total hashes, valid, stale, invalid your unconfirmed balance, so like currently what's sitting there that needs to be confirmed, my pending balance, so what needs to be paid out, $1.76 from like the last, I'd say, almost 12 hours or so, and then my future PA balance. If you're wondering what PA, PA balance is, it's something that Flux incorporated, so when you, flux, uh, when you mine Flux, you're able to actually get rewarded with other tokens and coins and such, so like Tron and I believe there's even like Ethereum and a few others. They have a list of it on this website here and I'm not sure how it works. I think Flux still has to like turn it on on their end, but it's something they incorporated into like their recent update, but it's just not fully activated yet. But it's part of like the mining pools and it's in the system. They're just waiting for it to be turned on. So as you see, I have like a future balance of a dollar twenty four. So I have a dollar twenty four and like other cryptos it says Flux but it'll be distributed in other cryptos, I believe. And my total paid is a uh, 1.0393 flux, so $2.17 Canadian. 
and then it has your last 24 hours and your last week paid so like i said i just started running it like not too long after like uh i made my video and then i ended up running it a few days afterwards i was like you know what i'm gonna go ahead because i did research into flux and i decided to go ahead and start running it and then it has your current payout estimate for the current block and everything so your pa reward for the future instant like i said i still have to look into the pa rewards i'm still learning about that i didn't know about that feature and if you go to the right hand side here there's the minor hash rate payments and things like that and then once you go down a little bit more there's like the estimated earnings so it's going to update every time there's like a share found and things like mine just keeps changing here. So it shows you on daily how much you're making weekly and monthly, just like most pools. But some pools, like I said, don't have that. For example, like Z pool doesn't go this in depth with all its stats. So it's good to see other pools are because I like just reading information and learning about my miner and seeing how it's actually working with the stratum and such. And then you have your uh, statistics. So your names and such. This is just standard information all your souls and your shares and if you click these tabs up here you're actually going to see your current like effort on the block your uh, last difficulty even like the mining agent and like the region you're in things like that and then you can even see a stream of your shares so this is just like an emulation of my current mining thing and all the accepted shares and which ones it's coming from so like GTX 1650, 1060, 1060, 1060, 1650. So as you see there, it's, it's pretty in depth. You can see a lot of information, which is always nice on like the mining side of things. But yeah, that's all of your recent block rewards, all the ones that you help contribute towards and then your rewards, how much you got of that block. Like I said, you could solo mine and try for that full 75 yourself. It depends on luck. You don't always need a strong system. Like I said, if you have good internet connection and things like that, you could always hit a solo block. I've done it in the past, not for Flux, but for other coins. And if you keep scrolling down, you have your payment history. This is kind of what I was waiting for to make this second part of the video was make sure the payments went through. Everything went through legitimately, you know. But I seen like Hero Miners was a solid pool. There's a lot of activity, you know. Like I said, they have a whole list of different coins here. You could go ahead and check out even if you wanted yourself. But yeah, I wasn't meaning to make this video to specifically show off like this pool and say go use this pool only. I was just saying this is one I l literally came across when I started mining Flux. Because I wanted something that was a little more consistent with blocks and such. Because I just wanted a little more consistent payout. I'm like that for myself. I like mining and having like a daily payout even like every few days. But yeah, overall, like I said, it's a pretty solid pool. There's a, like... The mining calculator, the in-depth stats, you're all good there. And like I said, multiple stratums. So everything is good there. So you'll be able to connect no matter where you are really in the world by the looks of it. And even in Canada, they have one. I believe it's in like like Montreal or Toronto or something like that. So it's, it's good to see that there's a wide range of this because it just opens it up for a lot more people because some people have connectivity issues when it comes to mining pools and such. But yeah, that's pretty much all I got for today's video. If you did enjoy, make sure to hit that thumbs up and hit that subscribe button for more content like this and more tutorials and just more tips and tricks. That's what I like doing. I like working with graphics cards on a budget and trying to find profitable algorithms this way. I could just go full out and spend money, but I don't really necessarily have the funds to go and drop crazy amounts of money and save up crazy amounts of money to go and buy these big rigs like other ones. So this is why I do this content and I'm also bring it to everybody else because I imagine there's other people in that situation. But I hope you all have an amazing day and this is Krebsy Crypto signing out.